quick introductions, um, if this works. It did work, okay. So um, my name is Christian Hernandez. I am a product manager at Red Hat. Um, I've actually, I'm pretty active in the Argo community, so if you, you've probably seen me on the Slack, if you're on the Slack there as well. Um, and then um, I'll let Hillary introduce herself here. Oh, thank you. Oh, am I on? I am, cool. Okay. Uh, my name is Hillary. I am a software architect at Red Hat, and yeah, it does say Chief Mermaid. That's really my business card title, you're welcome. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm somewhat of a silent lurker in Argo, but I am around the CNCF Slack. I'm on the Kubernetes Code of Conduct Committee, so you might know me from that. Uh, yeah. Cool. And um, in case you don't know, we, uh, Hillary and I, we, we do a bi-weekly? Every other week? We Roughly do, we every do, other week, yeah. yeah. A, 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 um, stream, uh, Red Hat streaming on about GitOps, so that's kind of like the, the link right there. It's and the really. Yeah, that, and that's the T-shirt. So, by the way, she already gave them all away. I did. Um, if uh, if you're curious, we, we do this a lot, right? We um, you know we we banter back and forth on the stream, and this is kind of like a condensed version of something you'll see on the stream, right? So yeah, it's um, like uh, our best hits almost. Yeah, like. our, yeah, exactly. This, this, so you're seeing a live representation of what we do our stream, and we talk a lot about GitOps and Argo and just you know CI/CD and DevOps in general. So. Um, so, how many folks here are, would, would you consider um, yourself a like security expert in your field? There's a few, this, okay. uh, someone was apprehensive. Okay. Okay, cool. People not, getting confidence in themselves, I like all that. All right, cool, not, not a lot. And, and the only reason I ask is because I recently have gone into the space and uh, I've heard some great security talks and I was kind of a little bit humbled. So um, anyways, if I get anything wrong or if I uh, misspeak, please you know, let, take me to the side. I love learning about this stuff. Uh, I've been recently getting into, um, like I said, security, security practices um, as it relates to Argo CD and things like that. So we kind of, um, you know, since, since Hillary um, does SRE work, right, or in, in a former life, SRE work uh, at Red Hat and has gone through some like security implications. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, let's, let's do a talk about this. And um, I like to start off with um, talking about the age of GetOps, right? We've come a long way in a short time. Um, I think, you know, I don't have to go through a lot of, you know, kind of like the pros of Argo City. I think you've, <laughs> if you haven't heard it yet, you've heard a lot about it um, today. Um, during the conference, right, and, and not only Argo CD, but GitOps in general, like it's, you know, and, and Red Hat, we, we've gone all, all in Argo CD, is, is just like the made for automation, right, and it's, and it's I, I like to say like you're, 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 you're automating the automation aspect of it, so you're, you're taking like the nature of CI CD, which is in, in itself, um, you know, automated, right? Like that's, you know, people are building like, you know, um, these workflows with webhooks and things like that. And um, and with Kubernetes, right? That's also kind of automated, right? You have, you have like kind of a declarative nature of Kubernetes and CI CD and you're taking all this automation and you're automating it uh, even further. Um, and, uh, you know, because of this, right? Argo CD and GetOps, right, by extension has, um, like just quickly being adopted, right? And, and I've seen you know, all, all kinds of folks from different verticals uh, doing great things. Um, I was blown away for some of the things uh, that that, um, uh, that consultant doing work for the German government was, that, that was I think that was an amazing talk. Um, so it's just big, big quickly just being adopted. And as, as you saw in the morning, it's like the number three most um, fastest growing thing in the CNCF landscape, which I think is just, just, just crazy. And um, yeah, so anyways, just kind of the, the, the idea of Argo CD just being massively adopted um, is, uh, is, I think is great. I would say, were you there earlier today? Um, Andrew Block, one of, the, uh, uh, one of our colleagues at Red Hat, um, somebody came up to him and was like, hey, I met you a few years ago at this conference and you told me, hey, this Argo CD, that's gonna be big. And he's like, and I blew you off. I did not believe you. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. And I was like, that is the best moment. Yeah, the best over, moment ever. go yeah. home. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, no, for sure. And that just shows like just yeah. kind of how this community has, has grown. Um, and one of the big things I think Argo CD has um, that, that allows you to do, you know, in, in extension GitOps is to have, um, you know, uh, you're able to audit what you have in production. 
right? And it makes things like triage a little easier, mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, like, you know, who committed what and who approved which, and, you know, even at massive scale, you can kind of, like, trace back to what, um, you know, what happened where and why, right? And it's, you know, um, and this, like I said before, it made CI CD more automated, made it the automated, um, it automated the automation. Um, but with everything that GitOps and um, Argo CD gets you, um, it's uh, not it's not inherently secure. So I'm going to be a little careful about this because I don't want to make it seem that Argo CD is insecure, right? It's it's not inherently insecure, but it's not uh, sorry, it's not inherently secure, but it's also not inherently um, insecure either, right? So like, it, it's the, the really the point I'm trying to make is that security isn't free, right? Like you can't really like buy security off the shelf. And um, so again, GitOps isn't inherently insecure, but it's not you know, it inherently secure either. It's kind of like, you can't go, please give me one security, please, off, off the shelf, right? Um, um, security as, um, is really a practice, right? And so you, it's, it's kind of like, it, it's the idea of like the DevOps movement Right, I think security is, is, you know, it has its own buzzword now, it has like DevSecOps, I think someone put uh, uh, devs, um, get secure DevOps or GitOps or something like that and saying like GitOps is a cornerstone of that security and I think that's very, I think that's true. Um, but, um, the, you know, the, the idea of DevSecOps, right, is the kind of like, okay, this is actually more of a practice and this is kind of, taking these security precautions and, um, you know, security practices um, and being part of the release cycle, right? Where DevOps, where we had like, you know, we're trying to fix the, you know, throwing over the wall sort of idea of, of Dev and Ops. Well, now we want to put security in that. We don't want security to come at the end, right? We don't want security, the security team to like kick back your release because of something, right? Something you didn't know. And so um, the, um, so with going back to like to the GitOps, um, the, Again, I'm trying to be very careful not to say GitOps is insecure or Argo CD is insecure, but really when you start automating a lot of things and you don't take security into considerations, you're actually automating a lot of attack vectors. So, you know, it, in, in any, any part of your CI CD um, workflows, um, you're, if, if you're not really taking security in, into consideration in each step, you're actually introducing um, a way to, um, you know, your attack vectors at each step, right? So, you know, uh, something can happen in, in any part of it, right? And so just the fact is having audibility and um, traceability and audibility isn't necessarily secure, right? Like, just like, oh, I, I can audit. I'm like, well, that's really a reactionary thing more than anything else. Um, I think that um, GitOps and Argo CD in general reveals your weaknesses yep. more than anything else. Right, so it's it's more like oh, like you know, I think very early on, like what do you mean? As soon as I commit something, it goes into production. I'm like, it says a lot that you're very very nervous that when someone commits something, it goes into production. Um, there, it's in you know, really that's really where where we're coming from. That um, um, you know that that that's kind of like what my point of view is. Like okay, you know, GitOps and Argo City kind of like reveals a lot of the stuff um, that you know you may be nervous about. And so um, a lot of organizations and a lot of things I've seen is that, um, that a lot of places are doing a lot with observability, right, and scanning, things like that. Um, but that's not enough, really. Like, if you really, really want to take a security seriously, um, those are reactionary things. Like I said before, there was like, okay, like, something happened, what do I do now sort of thing. And, and, and all of that is very, very important, but not part of the complete picture. So um, security really starts early in the um, software development life cycle. And, um, you know, as a lot of us know, like, I think security, a lot of, like, like security incidents ha actually happen at the code level. Yes. Um, so, like... Don't stop yeah. spoiling my yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was going to say, Hillary's going to go over, like, it, like incident handling and how, how, how that happened at Red Hat for Log4j. And I'll, I'll, I'll say that, but it's... Um, that's, that's where it starts. And... And this is kind of like where that whole buzzword shift left has, ha has happened, right? It's like, hey, we need to start really, really early in the software development life cycle. And in the United States, um, there was the executive order that everything requires SBOMs now, right? 
And there is something in, um, in the United States, uh, in the, it's in the Senate, Senate committee called Securing Open Source Software Act of 2023, where they want to, um, wants to hold companies liable for bad cybersecurity. So we are no longer shifting left, we're being dragged left, right? A lot of these things are becoming very, very important. Things that like me as myself, as a former admin, former, um, you know, um, sysadmin, kind of ignore to be like, that's kind of like security's problem. It's, 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 now we're all security experts, or we have to be, or we at least have to know um, that um, security starts up there, right? We're all being dragged up at the code, at the code aspect of it. So, um, so that way I don't, I don't want to burn a lot of Hillary's time. So, um, kind of things that, that, that I, to keep in mind, right? Uh, this is still an evolving space, right? Um, you know, a lot, you know, the executive order said, hey, in the United States, hey, everything needs to have an SBOM. I think companies are going to follow that. But like, really, like, what are you looking for in your SBOM? Like really, like how are you gonna use your S-bomb? This is still evolving, where people don't really know, okay, well, I have an S-bomb, how am I gonna use it? And so, um, you know, it's, this, this is, um, um, it, it's S-bombs I, I, I find are kind of like security theater, as um, I think someone else uh, 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 posted in their, um, uh, in their presentation earlier is, um, and that's, that's true of like all the things, like scanning, or like, oh yeah, I'm scanning everything, I have S-bombs, I have this, it's like all of that, like tools is security theater versus practices, which is the actual security, right? And um, some, something um, that I'm kind of uh, following is uh, the VEX, which is a vulnerability exploit exchange. Um, I'm following OpenVEX personally, but um, I think, in terms of automation, GitOps and Argo CD, VEX is gonna be very important because now we have a machine readable version of CVEs. Um, and um, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see kind of like the evolution of, of VEX and automation, GitOps and security as well. Um, because uh, like I said, we're all now, we're gonna be indoctrinated <laughs> and now you're officially you know, security experts um, we're all being dragged left, whether you want to or not. So uh, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Hillary, who's an actual expert of- Oh, that's <laughs> of a strong word. That's <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, just, uh, I love that you put to the rescue on there. I want the noted that he's the one who said that, not me. Okay. I just left it because I loved it. Um, okay, this is what we're talking about, right? This is a really crude, I'm bad at art drawing of our software supply chain problem. And what you're going to notice is we have all these people that are actors, but like, who are those? Who, who are they? Those people acting on that open source repo? I don't. I don't know you. I have no idea who you are. Uh, literally, I don't know this person. Um, so <laughs> it's not my friend sitting in the front. I actually do not yeah. know this person. Um, so I don't know what you, what your intentions are, or so forth. Right? This this creates, this creates um, an uncomfortable amount of room for the human capability to have error, right? And I don't like that. I say that a lot, that an uncomfortable amount of room for human error. We are all of us fallible. And while we probably are not going to intentionally be bad actors, we are going to do things that can be bad and kind of cause bad things. Um, so this is, this is holistically, this is our software supply chain. Like this is our problem. This is why we have that zero trust buzzword. It's very popular right now. This is why because you shouldn't trust anybody, not even yourself. That's why we have peer review. Um, I'm not going to read you my slides. I don't have this kind of time. So I also don't know what they say because I forgot. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, no, I'm not. So, um, but basically in that whole concept of, of zero trust, lock down your repos, right? You need to have mandatory peer reviews. You need to have automation that checks on your PRs and does the things and makes sure things are solid. You need to be basically doing everything you can as early as possible, like Christian said, at the code level. And that includes where the code is hosted. So lock down your repos. Depending on your situation, you might even want to consider using a private self-hosted Git, right? Depending on what you're doing. That's, GitHub is wonderful. GitLab does cool things. You can host your own GitLab. If you want GitLab, you can host your own Git anything. Uh, keep in mind that it's also an open source project and you can just build it and run it. 
Anyhow, um, moving on. I hope you took pictures of that. The slides will be available later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this builds off our last diagram, and there is nothing for you to really read here. This is just kind of another diagram that takes some of those concepts we just were talking about and turning it into a visual because I'm trying to get better at drawing. Actually, this is the entire reason this is here. Um, so one thing that we talked about, okay, securing repos is so open source software. You can push your security onto a vendor. You can. So Red Hat provides um, container images for basically everything, right? And then we are standing by our container images that they're secure. So if you go to a vendor for your open source dependencies and your open source container images for what you need for your project, you have pushed that security onto somebody else. I hope you trust them, I hope you trust us, but that saves you that you don't have to go redo things, right? We are, uh, Red Hat Postgres removes the root user, we do that for you, right? Our Red Hat Python has gone through all of the subchains of dependencies to make sure that we're giving you the most secure version, the most secure co thing that we can. So basically that's kind of what I wanna talk about here is that you can push your security onto someone else, onto someplace else, use trusted vendors, use trusted images. You don't have to rebuild everything yourself. Don't reinvent that wheel. Um, so, I actually am going to already slightly correct Christian here, which I think that Argo's pull model does make it slightly more inherently secure than other CD tools. So because you are telling it, you're going to look here, right, right here, and only here. And when there is a thing here, then you will pull that thing from only that place and only that way, and then push it to only these locations. That's better than a kind of a push model where you have something kind of open to just receive. So I like, I like Argo, I like Argo for that. I think that that's, that's better because of, of the specifics. Um, similarly in that in your configurations and so forth, don't use things like floating tags, those are bad. Um, and that goes into the whole auditability thing. You should know exactly what's running, where it's running, why it's running there. Um, Always, always use authentication, right? Anything where there's an, even if you have the option to not be authenticated, do it authenticated, just do it. Always authenticate. Um, for Kubernetes, use service accounts, right? Um, specifically in OpenShift, we have a built-in like security context and, and um, roles and auth authorization plugins and stuff that we stand by. And so we love service accounts in OpenShift. They're a big thing for us. Uh, use them because what this gives you is the most amount of actions with the least amount of access. And that's really important for security, okay? I need to be able to do some things and there are a lot of things I never, ever, ever need access to. So while I might have some sort of special role that has certain access that could be considered privileged, it doesn't need all of the privileged access. So set up your service accounts, use role bindings, everything that you can do, actions, not access. Um, and I mentioned that we do this in our images, remove your root users, you don't need them, you don't. Take them out. So Christian talked about this, right? There are popular scanning tools, Dependabot, SNCC. Uh, we have something in our Quake project called Claire, which tells us like act is active scanning of the images. Um, scanning is great. Do the scanning because when something is announced, when a CVE is announced, you need to have some way of finding that thing, right? You need to know where it is. So get a scanning tool, invest in scanning tools, not just the ones that scan the things like at commit, at PR, at merge, and you want something that's actually scanning what you have running to, because you, again, you need to know what is running and where. Um, but talking about how this is in a little bit of security theater, I'm going to kind of make a, a pretty bold, possibly unpopular statement. Major CVEs, Heartbleed, Log4j, Sun something, I forget the name of all of a sudden. Anyway, all of those, those vulnerabilities could have been caught with negative test casing and negative tests way, way, way back left, like all the way on the left, right? So your scanning is gonna be great, it's gonna show you what you missed, but start using your software badly on purpose, okay? Start doing that. I want you to try to flood it. I want you to try to DDoS it, right? Do bad things to your code. Okay. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now we're just going to be a pause. I'm going to use all that time anyway. <laughs> you, right? Okay. So use bad things. Do bad things. Red team it. I actually, uh, we set up a game that we do in the SRE land where we red team infrastructure and just see what happens. And then somebody else gets to go fix it. Do those things. Take, take those practices, play games with it. However you get it into your standard way of working, do those things. Um, there's also something that I saw really recently that they just sent around out of our pod set group, which is a pre-commit webhook, which will double check your commits for things like secrets. That's cool, do that. Um, store references to secrets instead of secrets wherever possible. On our stream, we went over something recently called the external secrets operator, which does that. Love it, great pattern, follow that. Um, and again, continue, continuous scanning. You need to know if something has made it into production. Story time! <laughs> Are we awake? I am, but that's because I'm jet lagged and now <laughs> I'm just like in the silly state, right? Okay. I live in California. So the day the CVE for Log4j was announced, I wake up at seven in the morning and it is the most insane explosion my cell phone has ever seen. <laughs> um, and I am getting pinged by all kinds of people at the company who would never usually talk to my pay grade because I, am the C I was at the time the SRE lead for a team that was like running some major things in production and guess what? They happened to be vulnerable too, right? Yeah, okay. So why did we know so quick, right? We had all of these things that I just talked about in place. We knew what our container images were, we knew where they were living, we knew everything about them, and we had a quick way of scanning them to determine if they were going to be vulnerable, right? So that was the easy part for us because we had done all of those best practices I just told you about, right? We had the scanning, we had the auditing, we had the observability, we had the things. Then it was the, okay, well now we've got all these things and we know we're getting we actually knew we were actually getting um, attacked, right? People were trying to attack our services and see what they could get. So we have to also move then very quickly. So we use GitOps. We're a very GitOps heavy environment. It's why we knew where everything was and also why we were able to patch and respond very quickly. So that automation that speeds up all the things when you have everything in place and you can identify where a problem is and you can put a patch out, it also speeds that process up a lot too. So we were able to get our patches out very quickly. We were able to, it was still an eight hour war room call. I'm sure other people experienced that too. Um, <laughs> but if I compare this to Heartbleed, which when I went through that at the company I worked at was this big monolithic system and it was like where and how and what and just n night and day, right? It took us forever to go through that whole process compared to GitOps where we're talking matters of hours from the time a patch was, was provided to actioning it to actually shutting off access to certain things that were non-critical meanwhile until everything happened. All of that was controlled with GitOps. So all of our incident response was completely automated. It just required a couple PRs in the right places with the right reviews and off we went. Um, so that's Part of why, right, you see a lot of, you're, you're still seeing the fallout. You're still hearing stories of, of various exploits being used, right? You're probably not going to hear one about us because of all of these things. And I will tell you that GitOps made that so much better. Um, so you won't regret having a good GitOps process in place that takes into account all of your security. Um, and this, he, Christian mentioned this, security is a moving target, right? It absolutely is a moving target. Um, Everything is, the space is evolving, we're learning new things, we're building new technologies all the time. When we build new technologies, we build new attack vectors, we build new risks. You're constantly going to have to be learning and evolving in this space and with this space. Um, and so don't try to be an expert in all of the things. Uh, try to surround yourself with the experts in the things and build a community and talk to each other and uh, rely on your coworkers. So we can do that by putting together working groups in your own company. You can do that by putting together, like I said, game days um, is really fun. We do that a lot. Uh, anything that you can do to kind of, again, it's all about the practices and the process, less so than the technology. That's it. Yep, and uh, remember, take the survey. Oh right? yeah, Watch that's the, a good one. Yeah, <laughs> the Argo survey. So, thank you.
Yeah, that's good. Uh, we don't have time for any questions. Thank you so much for that wonderful talk. Um, so in closing here, we have just like three slides, and then I'll, I'll let you go. Don't worry. I know it's beer o'clock. I know it's beer o'clock in Amsterdam right now. Yeah, <laughs> no less. Uh, so here we go. Should have my slides up. Um, so uh, one thing that we do want to announce is upcoming Argo US. ArgoCon US is coming. Um, we're finalizing dates. It's likely going to be September in the Bay Area. So if you have a chance to come to that, obviously it would be great to have you. Uh, also to find there are tons of, you didn't get your thirst quenched by all of the Argo content flying at your face all day. There are so many more Argo talks happening over the next three days. Just go to Sketch, search Argo. There's a fantastic talk tomorrow with uh, Costas is going to be speaking again with Ilya um, on scaling multi-tenancy with vCluster. You've got uh, operating multi-tenancy service mesh with Argo CD from uh, Solo.io. Uh, I'm going to be speaking Thursday, in injecting some chaos engineering with Argo CD. So be sure to catch those talks because Argo just keeps on coming. Um, and then, obviously, we want you to get involved. So uh, you can join uh, Argo contributors on CNCF Slack. That's a great place to get started. I saw a lot of people today were asking questions. Hey, I want this feature. I want that feature. Guys, I got to tell you, if you go to our issues, there is no shortage of I've got a great idea. But there is a shortage of I've got some hands willing to implement these great ideas. So we'd love to have you contributing. Join the contributors channel. Um, and we also do contributors experience meetings every Thursday at 5.15 p.m. in this time zone. And so that's a great place. If you're opening an issue, you're getting ready to open an issue, maybe you're confused, you're not sure what to do, join that call. We're super friendly. We go through issues. We answer questions. We discuss the best approaches to how to solve different problems and, and add new features to Argo. So you'll be great for that. And then we also have a number of special interest groups. So SIG Security, SIG Marketing, SIG Scalability. These are all really exciting special interest groups that you can join. If you want to help plan the next ArgoCon, you want to join Christian, myself, others, then, uh, then we'd love to have you in SIG Marketing. If you want to be helping out with some of the scalability or just hearing about what's happening with scalability, because there's obviously new features being discussed all the time, and we're making pull requests and things of that nature. So please join that. You can find more of those at github.com slash Argo project slash Argo Proj. Uh, Argo Proj, Argo Proj, you got it. So get involved. Um, and with that, thank you to everybody from the Argo committee. Thank you to the CNCF. Thanks to all our volunteers. Huge amount of effort to make this event happen. And our very first ArgoCon EU, I think next year, I think KubeCon is going to be the co-located event of ArgoCon. <laughs> Great job. Thank you, everybody.